Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and going to be on regularly. We have Freeman, and of course his website is freemantv.com. Freeman TV, he is going to have a brand new magazine coming out, and you can go to weirdstuffmagazine.com, weirdstuffmagazine.com. If they want to contact you, uh, Freeman, uh, they should go to the website freemantv.com. You've got an article here. I want to kind of go through this because, uh, as I tell people, sometimes I get special guests on, and you're one of them, where we can go beyond the 10% of things that Dr. Deagle talks about. And people don't realize that we're on the uh, precipice, like the opening lines of the of the very large book called The Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. We are on the brink of, in a sense, a global mind with the Internet, uh, with people starting to realize and going beyond the, quote, the current mundane version of their uh, parochial religions rather than understanding the nature of what it is to be a human being. Uh, much of this was taught by Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus, but it was lost by the early church because they were involved with uh, being taken over by the secret orders that passed paganism through from Rome to the, quote, Roman Catholic Church and all the daughter churches. And, of course, the spin-offs, including Islam and all the other spin-offs, have all been, in a sense, one form or another of perverting the true science of the spirit uh, so that mankind can be manipulated by the people of clay and iron, which are people bred through generations to be not only intuitives and have more advanced spiritual giftings but to become slaves and avatar after they get mind controlling and create alters or sub uh, personalities by these transdimensional memes and entities that control their uh, actions and their behavior so when we look at people like um, mr obama or hillary clinton or anybody else in high level orders throughout any political system uh, they are people of clay and iron, and they have to understand that our world is very ancient, that our, our our heritage is very ancient, and that human beings are quite a bit much more than most people think in terms of the nature of what it is to be a being, a person, a human being on this planet, and that we live in a highly populated universe of both good and evil, and we better get with the program when it's literally embedded in every book of every religious and ancient book on earth, but people ignore that. But you are the one of the very few that sees well beyond that to actually show the symbology that the global leader always trying to prove to themselves that they're in control and that the profane, because we don't understand the symbology, are simply victims and cattle to be abused, used, and thrown aside when we're no longer useful. So, uh, Freeman, tell us all about this remarkable new magazine and this article that we want to go through and some of the key points. All right, yeah, a couple of different, and thank you. <laughs> thank you for that intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, did an amazing, you do an amazing job, by the way. We get into deeper things than most people, when they, they leave, their brain is spinning in different directions. They say, my gosh, did I, ooh. I tell people, firstly, let your brain calm down afterward. Ask some really good questions on a couple of things that you think you heard, and then go off and pray, because your spirit and your intellect will ring if it's true. Don't believe anything we say. Go off and investigate it and realize, like, how come these coincidences are pressing? For example, today we have the launch of the Dragon with Mr. Edwin Musk, who also owns PayPal and the SpaceX program, which has got a giant contract for NASA to supply supplies for a number of flights. Now it's, you know, <laughs> every globalist for themselves uh, to the uh, space station. This is pretty bizarre that literally corporations and blackout projects have now taken over space exploration from our public government programs like NASA. Yeah, and that's definitely something we're going to get into deep to today. And so I have two things coming out. First of all is weird stuff. And weird stuff is really an encyclopedia of the occult using pop culture, politics, and the new technologies as the explanations for you to see. So really it's a tool. Weird stuff operation culture creation is our first one that we'll be putting out. And you can pre-order this right now on freemantv.com under the Kickstarter. Uh <laughs> And this one is going to outline, first, the occult significance of popular culture, of uh, Madonna showing you the mark of the beast at the Super Bowl, or uh, why Beyonce is dressing up as a, as a robot in Metropolis-type scenarios. And we'll outline magic and everything that's involved and then explain how this is represented through the popular culture. I have a second one coming out after that I'll call Sorcerers of Atlantis, which will get much deeper into what we're talking about today. 
uh, we've yeah. already covered much of the, the popular culture on your show, so let's, uh, let's get to this, because I just released a new article in Paranoia Magazine, and I also have it up on my website for anyone that wants to go read it. Uh, it's called Science Fiction or Space Action. And really, this is a combination of both of those ideas, because most of the symbolism that I've discovered, and I'll tell you, if you want to find Satan, I'll show you Satan. Uh, it's, it's in front of you every single day, and you just don't realize it. I mean, the right. one word that makes 666 in English magic and English gematria is fox. And that, you, you just start noticing how many foxes you see now. You'll see fox clothing, Firefox, Fox Mulder, Lucius Fox, Fox Productions, Fox Searchlight, and on and on. And, and you realize that each time you see this, this is the number of the beast, 666. In Hebrew, that's the letters VVV, which you will see on the Monster Drink logo, which is 666 in Hebrew as your Monster Drink logo. So I started to take this symbolism and, and apply it to the new technologies to see what I came up with, because obviously I had, I had clued myself into something. When I, when I recognized the number 66 in corporate logos at first, when it was still up 66 or Highway 66, and I, I, I questioned very quick, uh, quickly, you know, if, okay, so we're looking at a Freemasonic organization that is catering to all of the, the uh, corporate world. They are the creation of most corporations, and they put their signs and symbols in all of these corporate logos. And when I got to 66, I was like, well, this obviously fits the pattern. And since Freemasonry is Kabbalism, I could then look into a Kabbalistic magician's dic dictionary and look it up to see what 66 was. Well, this was the number of the fallen angels, the number of the beast, or the uh, mark of the beast, excuse me, the number of the abyss, and where angels such as Lilith, Azrael, the Azabub, and all of these fallen angels actually live, according to Kabbalistic tradition. Yeah, by the so way, the I abyss, uh, the lowest level of the abyss is actually entitled by 666. The reason is our space, if you want to call our dimensions, are not four, but five. Five is what's called tur curved time space. It's the actual vortex field that can form black holes and the white holes where energy and matter re merges in stars and planets. 666 literally is the lowest level of hyperspace where it is the lowest level of the abyss, which is actually the seven spiritual levels that make a complete of 12 dimensions, and the 13th literally is what's called the eternal now. So there's harmonics of this throughout the universe. And... So 666 literally delineates the the name of the abyss, which is the lowest level of hyperspace. Well, that will fit right into what we're discussing then, because uh, what I didn't recognize was that the 66 symbolism goes to this fallen angel situation. And in English, and actually, if you go and study the work of Kenneth Grant, who was a magician following Aleister Crowley, he pretty much took over for Crowley, uh, he outlines the mark of the beast. Now, a lot of people don't realize what the mark of the beast would look like. And according to these magicians, the sorcerers, if you will, the, the mark of the beast is an X with a circle around it. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, that's Xbox. That's uh, <laughs> uh, the, the X-Men and, and on and on. And, and here comes Madonna out on stage standing on top of a VV symbolism at the Super Bowl. And this VV made into an OX in the center of it, which she straddled the, the mark of the beast as she was singing her songs on stage at the Super Bowl. Um, this symbol and sign all of a sudden opened this whole new idea of uh, transmission into the other dimension, into the abyss, if you will. Uh, the corporation that, that produces the TV show The Voice and you'll see again the VV symbolism in the voice because of the, the finger, the, the peace sign with the V of the voice. But this is produced by a company named Talpa. And Talpa's corporate logo is the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which has 10 points on it. And they have taken the 10th point, which is heaven, and moved it to the point of the abyss in their corporate logo. So all of a sudden they have heaven in the abyss as their corporate logo. Now, right. as I started to reference this with you know, keep, science fiction, keep that thought. Keep, into keep some of the science fiction. Health. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, we want you to complete those thoughts you had before the break. That's really important, uh, Freeman, because 
people may say, well, we're getting into a territory that, that doesn't make sense. Look, uh, it's really important to understand what I call the, the science and technology of the spirit because all the rulers of earth fully understand this. Now, to their level, they believe that the that the the, literally the power of Lucifer, of Satan, the, the flaming fire, fire of the 144,000, this is whether it's the Kabbalistic uh, Zoharian Jews or it's the high-level Kabbalistic warlocks, uh, all of these people are all basically uh, minions of the dark side. They believe that they'll use the power of forces, the god of forces, and these technologies to rule the earth, and they have for millennia. Uh, people are just becoming aware now that this really has been the case. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Telefunken, the Nazi organization or corporation, is the one who brought us the the, the television. It, it mass-produced the television out to us, and, and people need to understand that the television was originally designed to make contact with the other side. That was its true effort. Now, when you start to look at Project Bluebeam, uh, many people talk about the holograms and the big show and things like that, but they never really get into Serge Manas true beliefs was that they were going to transmit these demons into our souls using fiber optic lines and, and radio waves. Yeah, that's why we, we even are going to actually bring back on our EMF uh, technician for less EMF for radiation and other testing because they have technologies for, as I say, uh, seeking information across the void. Uh, there's an ancient organization in Europe called the Society of the Black Sun that came down into the modern era with the Nazis. And uh, what they did is they were actually channeling information from the demonic side uh, called transdimensionals. I don't like to refer to these as demons because it, you know, it conjures up ideas that people just don't comprehend. These are intelligent, dangerous, malevolent beings that are living in a higher dimensional plane in hyperspace that can directly avatar and control human beings and are hell-bent on destroying and controlling the planet. That's yeah, the reality. I wanted, we, I and they need to understand that. own terms so that people yeah. understood where the blue beam, blue beam project was actually coming from. But look where we're at right now. We have the Blue Brain Project going on, who is trying to create a mammalian brain inside of a computer. Now, we are reaching the levels of mind transfer technology. And what we have at this moment, okay, so you just mentioned SpaceX launching up to the International right. Space Station. Now, I've been following them since the day they were created and, and been watching the downfall of NASA and the rise of the privatized space programs. And I cover all of this in my Space War News section on FreemanTV.com so that you can see it all, see everything that's coming. I mean, right now, Russia's about to launch, or they're preparing for their 2015 launch to go to Apophis to try and... Uh, track that incoming asteroid because it might destroy all life on planet Earth. And of course, Apophis is the Egyptian Satan. Um, meanwhile, uh, they're about to launch the first year-long space station crew. So uh, a, a normal space station crew would only stay on board for six months, but they have launched up to the International Space Station what is known as Robonaut 2. Now, Robonaut 2 is a telepresence robot. That means that you can transmit your mind into that robot and use it as your own body. But next to Robonaut 2 on the International Space Station is six adult stem cells that were set up there to seek longevity. And they are very excited because uh, uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis Core, I think was the name of the company that sent it, it's their 19th flight out to the International Space Station to bring these right. stem cells to find immortality for the ro for the the astronauts. Well, actually, I'll tell you something that maybe you're not aware of, but we're going to bring on some scientists that actually discovered this with NASA, that when you fly over the poles, it has an interesting things in reprogramming cells. There's actually a polar field that only exists over the poles that reprograms stem cells and cells of the body to go back to a younger age. And they've actually developed a technology, which we're going to launch the technology in this show, uh, that apparently can reprogram your cells to their earlier... Uh, we call bioplasmatic stage. In other words, can reverse that. Uh, technologies are so much further advanced. I remember flying back uh, a number of years ago, back in, I think it was 2003, flying back from Denver to uh, New Jersey, and I was up in first class talking to a senior engineer from Sony, um, and he was 
I said, well, what's new? And he was having a drink, and I was having a, having a drink as well, sitting beside him. He said, well, we've got this new laptop supercomputer. I said, really? I said, I bet it has light optic circuits. He said, so you're kidding. I said, how do you know that? I said, I bet it has and or not microcircuits and a laminar diamond, artificial diamond array uh, that doesn't generate any heat. And he said, you can't know that. That's classified. I said, look. These big corporations have got technologies. They have timelines of when they want to launch them in the next two to three centuries. They already have them under wraps in Warehouse 13, and your company is just one of those places. They're going to release the technology. And he looked at me and said, I need a double. I mean, people just don't grasp that the world that they see is literally everything and everybody. Even the TV shows like the Israeli-based series Homeland is ceremonial. It's there literally to hoodwink the public at the same time they're controlling the psychic destiny and the timeline of the population by convincing us that this is reality. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of predictive programming in, in all of these yeah. television shows, and you actually get more reality out of the science fiction than you will out of your news. There's let's no let's continue. That. So let's continue, because you cover this the article is very dense with some amazing information. So when you convert it back to biblical terms like fallen angels, and the word angel in Greek means messenger, it means that all through the Bible, including the chapters in Daniel, talk about clay and iron mingling themselves with the seed, and in Hebrew it means the actual genetics of man, and not just the physical genetics, the spiritual genetics literally the hyperdimensional body so when we look at people like Hillary Clinton she's a woman of clay and iron these are the rulers of earth that have got with a serpentine literally demon seed in them spiritually and physically we're not just dealing with normal human beings as it says in the uh, in the Magna Carta it says that the rights were given to humans which means in Welsh serpent men and everybody else was considered a manster or monster people don't grasp that the word monster actually meant a man in old English, manster meant someone who was not a lord or a bale who had the right to property by the Magna Carta. Interesting, eh? Well, strangely, as you say that, we, we tend to track what the agenda is by watching the toy aisles in Target and Walmart. And you can see the progression of how they program the children for the near future. And currently, the toy for girls is called uh, Monster High, and it says... Uh, be yourself, be unique, be a monster. And then right next to these monster dolls for girls are the alien hybrid dolls for girls called Novi. And you can see the progression going on as we start to move into this era because, you know, they have Katy Perry out there singing, I want to be abducted, I want to be a victim, fill me with your poison, you're an alien, I want to have a supernatural baby with you. Now, as we started talking about mind transfer technologies and the ideas behind this, this actually came through many ways, uh, mostly through channeling. And one of the, the things that isn't known is that the elite get together and they channel these entities. They design their architecture for better reception. We call them paramagnetic antennas. And in this, they use uh, the psychic Uri Geller, who was friends with Michael Jackson at the time, and Uri Geller was channeling a group of extra-dimensional beings known as the Nine. They later identified themselves as a supercomputer aboard a spaceship known as Spectra. Well, Uri Geller and Michael Jackson were hanging out together with the Raelian over at Clonade, and Michael Jackson wanted to have himself cloned. But he began with... Amazing. Keep that thought. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and um, Freeman, you know, a lot of people think this is not relevant to the current dialectic of Obama. We have to understand Obama, if you watch this video, which is Dreams of My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, which I tell everybody, you got to get this video. It's about 12 bucks and change. Order it at Amazon. It's the number one video about Obama right now. This will blow you away. But the symbology of the fact, remember now, communism came from Karl Marx. It came from Kabbalistic, Zoharian, Satanic. And I don't want to use the word Jew. I'm going to call them Kabbalistic uh, warlocks, would be a better term. And they're the descendants of the, of the apostate uh, Druids. Because people understand that the ancient ones, the Druids, uh, were in a sense taken over by the dark side. And uh, 
they manage and control everything from the international banking systems to science to universities and they treat the profane because you don't understand the technology you don't see it in the news and anybody if you raise it up you say oh yeah you're one of those conspiracy theories and we're just pattern recognizers we're like a bird that can recognize a pattern and say yeah look at that pattern on that butterfly or because we understand and see things in a higher dimensional level we can see patterns of behavior, patterns of, of dialectics, patterns of control that others don't want to see. And it's right there in front of you, like these miniseries Fringe you talk about on here, or Battlestar Galactica, or major media like Katy Perry's songs. Or, I mean, it's right in your face. It's not even off to the side. It's like the pink battleship in your front yard with flower pots on it. And they say, well, it's not a battleship. And it's still a pink battleship right in your front yard. Yeah, at Stargate, their production company is known as Double Secret. And I always say that's Double Secret because the secret's right in front of your face. Uh, Stargate SG-1 uh, was in cooperation with the United States Space Force. They even gave old uh, Robert, or what was his name, uh, Colonel O'Neill from the Stargate show, uh, Special Brigadier General. Isn't award, that you know, which isn't normally given to civilians because well, it's right the very one of the very first things I was told at U.S. Space Command was that, uh, so you won't freak out when you find this out, we're going to tell you everything. And the very first statement that the head of Space Command said to me back in July 10th, 1994, is, uh, we control every cubic centimeter of space between here and Mars. I said, no, no, you mean the moon, right? Like, we're, we're still there or we might be there? He said, no, no. And he got real mad at me, actually. He said, no, listen up, doctor. We control every cubic centimeter of space between here and Mars is oh my god does that mean we have a colony on Mars right oh and we have entire fleets of space based craft that are all over the place that are way beyond the Tinker Toy space missions we call like you know the the current one is a SpaceX but the, the space shuttle was designed you can actually look at the plans by Nazi Germany in 1930s yeah, I mean, yeah, people you don't just even have to go that far out of the realms because much of these rocket launches cannot be hidden. You know, they're launching out of the Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. They're launching out of Cape Canaveral. What can they do? They can't hide these launches. So this month, they are launching the X-37B, which is a robotic space plane. Now we're moving into the era of Battlestar Galactica, which, if people don't realize, it, that is the Mormon creation myth. So think about that as Romney's running. Uh, yeah. Mormon creation well, myth is outlined in Battlestar Galactica. They actually believe their god lived near a planet named Kobal or Kolob, and in uh, Battlestar Galactica, it's Kobal. You know, they just switched the L and the B. Uh, but we are launching uh, the X-37B out of Cape Canaveral, and this is a roboticized space shuttle, which is about a fifth the size of the, nor uh, the, the original space shuttles. And it, it's run through, once again, telepresence uh, technologies where you can transmit yourself because it's a robot. So right there where they were in Battlestar Galactica when they were dealing with the Cylons, who were actually created by a reptilian race in the original story, uh, we have the robots and the space planes that are both AI and ready to go. Exactly. Now, what's interesting when you talk about reptilians is it turns out that Kolob is a star in the Orion Cluster. All the three different positions of the Great Pyramids of Egypt are actually in the specific star map of the Cluster of Orion. And in fact, the ancient uh, gods reach down through the mitre of the Pope actually worships the ancient god, fish god, called Ananes, who is the head of what's called the... Uh, the Gorgons. And the Gorgons were the people that came to, please, the 200 of them came to Mount Horeb to transfer technology to mankind, to farming, tech, metallurgy, etc. So, in fact, it's right in the Bible, but people just don't see it, that the, quote, fallen ones are beings from other worlds and other dimensionals, I call transdimensionals, that really did come here, that did come here to do horrifying things to the population of Earth, including genetic hybridization, and transfer of technology, and also left their not only their demon seed here in the form of giants, but also left their demon seed on the spiritual control of the planet Earth and our politics and religion. And most people don't realize that's why virtually every religion on Earth is completely infiltrated by some form of satanic masonism. And currently they are attempting to punch a hole into that other dimension. We are aware of CERN and their, their seeking of the God particle, which actually the, the original author called it the goddamn particle, but he didn't think that could be published, so they changed the title to the God particle. But he's an atheist, right? Uh, the creator of uh, the Higgs uh, boson. 
And so uh, <coughs> when, well, when we the, start to look at what technologies are happening right now, we are working on deep space communication guides so that they can transmit these radio frequency waves to other stars and other planets. As an example, the ISCAT antenna array, which was involved with the Norway spiral, was used to launch a Doritos commercial to Ursa Major, right? But Fox, and again, that's 666, went one step further, sending the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still up to uh, Alpha Centauri, which is believed to be the closest inhabited galaxy to ours. Now, we're going three light years that, away. You know, of all the movies that we have from Earth that we're going to send The Day the Earth Stood Still, which is a movie that basically says that humanity will never change where a warring tribe come and destroy us to another society as our first introduction to them. Well, now, we can take atheists like a... Right now is because yeah. it was launched in 2008, but took four years to get there. So the people of Alpha Centauri are watching the day the Earth stood still right now. And as yeah, we're no. dealing with this situation and we're looking at what Werner von Braun said was his enemy list, we have already been through the asteroid threat. Now we're up to aliens. And, of course, all of a sudden, the Royal Society, the U.N., and even NASA have, ad have identified alien ambassadors in their, um, in their mix. And along with this, then you bring in the, uh, Benjamin Funes, who is the astronomer for the Pope, and his uh, partner, uh, Felicio Mo, uh, who is the head of the astronomy at the, the Vatican. And yeah, they right. both came out saying, well, aliens are our space brothers and didn't suffer original sin. And yeah, I'd baptize an alien if he came, no matter how many tentacles he has, he has a soul. This is what these two priests were saying. Well, strangely yeah. enough, out of all the people they could have selected to go over to CERN, they chose these two gentlemen who are now working with CERN and punching a hole into the other dimension. But of course, yeah, well, like Dan Brown showed us, they first have to find antimatter in order to be able to keep the wormhole open. You need dark or exotic matter to do this. And so they started the Alpha Project, and the Alpha Project managed to capture antimatter for, I think it was 16 minutes, which is unheard of, ungodly, and amazing. Right. And this way they are able to open that portal and keep it open. Yeah, in fact, what the, people should understand, the God particle gravity is, in a sense, the ultimate force of the lower five-dimensional planes. Uh, you know, the, the universe itself at the Big Bang, and people should understand this, the Big Bang was the creation moment, was smaller than the smallest subatomic particle, and then expanded within a, a few hundreds of a second to be larger than our galaxy, which means it exceeded the speed of light by a very large margin. In other words, space expanded faster than the speed of light. Uh, what people need to understand is that, just think of it this logically, in our known universe, there's 460 trillion galaxies, which means there's more galaxies in our universe than, planet, than stars in our galaxy. It's thought that virtually 90 to 95 percent of the stars in our universe, which is over 150 billion stars, have planetary objects of them, at least 10 to 15 percent could support some form of, quote, life in it, whatever form it is. So what are the chances over billions of years that something has developed? Uh, come on. Especially when those higher dimensional forces, the creative force of the universe, God, could have created not only human beings here, but all across the vast universe. And some of them went good, and some of them went evil. And we're dealing with a galactic and a cosmic battle. Welcome back, and uh, you have so many amazing uh, uh, things you extract from this, and we've got to do some more interviews, maybe even uh, do an update perhaps tomorrow, because I have some open time. This is so central, because we don't have an election, we have a selection, we have a literally a, an occult ceremony on color election, where if we get Obama, we get eco-communism, atheistic eco-communism, and a form of, of uh, green fascism, and then if we get Romney, we're going to get high-level Masonic, celestial, terrestrial, and celestial kingdom, high-level Illuminati Masonism, which is no different than Battlestar Galactic, Galactic uh, philosophy of the gods. They're already the serpentine empires that go right back to the constellation of Orion and the Gorgons. People don't understand these terms. They don't realize that the Bible itself says this, but man doesn't get it. They don't get it that we have been 
as I said, uh, screwed to and tattooed by the demonic horde and for eons, and it's the time to throw off the bonds of evil on our planet and to see the true nature of what mankind is, the glorious being, creating the image of the creator of the universe, and no longer be victims of this spiritual parasitism and destruction that's been destroying our planet. And, of course, it's part of the reason why we've also been under quarantine. Yeah, I would believe that. You know, we're looking at things like uh, there's a Russian entrepreneur named Itchkov who wants to create the Avatar program, and this is a mind transfer technology that he's hoping to send into a holographic body in its final outcome. Uh, he, he I actually tried to work with DARPA to try and bring his, his Avatar program to them, uh, and they said, well, no, thanks, we've already got an avatar program. We've already spent uh, $70 million building this, so we don't really need you, Mr. Ishkoff. Uh, you know, and when we start to reach this level and we start to realize that, oh, my God, our minds, or, our, you know, they put soul in that explanation into another body is, is an, an astounding time to be alive. Now, uh just to throw in one last little tidbit that came to light just recently, a Japanese team was just able to create eggs and, st- and sperm of a human from stem cells. So now we don't even yeah. need the human anymore to create this. But the thing yeah. was that there was only one computer on this entire planet right now that is known by the public that's capable of doing this type of mind transfer technologies, and that's CERN's grid. And that is the supercomputer that was attached to the Large Hadron Collider, which has 160,000 computers with directed fiber optic lines and is capable of pushing exabytes of information. Now, an exabyte is a lot of data. It's one quintillion bytes. Uh, They say that all words written could be contained in five exabytes. Now they're finding a way to then use this type of... uh, uh, computing power now to be able to transmit your soul through through this CERN technology, and it, I found it really curious. CERN has a device that that sees the anti universe, and the corporation that made this was called Grailator, and their corporate logo is a reptilian claw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, let, let me just deviate a bit, but it's going to fit in perfectly. Uh, what is a neuron? A neuron is a supercomputer with what's called quantum nanofibers. And when you have a memory stored, it's stored across a neural network, not because of the neural connections. Those are the ways of the neurons connecting, like fiber optic lines. It's the actual nano, it's what's called these quantum neural filaments in the cells that have a wide distribution. That's why you can take the brain of a salamander and transport after you've taught them a lesson or taught this experiment goes back 40 years and transfer that section of cortex to another brain of a salamander and they'll actually get the knowledge what they've been working at for many years and one of the things that i mentioned on the show because it's something that is a first-hand knowledge i have not second-hand is they tried to recruit me when i wanted to do research at ucla in 1977 at the va hospital with dr wallace toward a lot i was going to work as a senior resident and phd on brain uh, the brain uh, tissue repository and micro uh, uh tome operator to set up a scanning electron microscopy and advanced immunology of brains of people with ms the world tissue repository the other four projects were all super soldier and they were actually had a custom CT scan implanter in Dr. Tortelot's office. They had a split helmet to convert thoughts directly to onboard commands with a then shining lights, specific lights, and symbology on the screen of the canopy of the jet. So literally by thoughts and by eye movements, you could at five times faster than hand-to-eye reflex control a jet and ordinances. Their whole scheme was they eventually wanted to... to to be able to crack the code of what's called a cortical code of thought. And the idea would be then to directly not only interface with a human being with thought, but have their thoughts directly downloaded directly to a supercomputer and actually connect human beings almost like neurons within a network and to a battlefield matrix. So their plan for females was to have a female template to horizontally insert DNA from various animals to have them to have the, the strengths of a jackal, the reflexes of a jaguar, and the sight of an eagle. And people say, oh, they can't do that. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, if you spend trillions of dollars on projects, you can get the most brilliant minds with no restraint, and you threaten them that if they have a patch on, they don't get their next patch in 72 hours, they're going to die a horrifying death, you can accomplish quite a bit over 60 or 70 years. And 
the problem is people don't grasp that this is real. They think that, no, no, this is science fiction, that they can't really do this. And if you look at the latest shows on the on Discovery Channel, etc., you're going to find that even in the public domain, they'll say, yeah, they're working hard at hacking the code. You can look at a functional MRI scan, and you can actually tell if somebody's saying one, thinking one word or another now. It's much more sophisticated than that. They know the, what's called the phonomic spectral patterns that actually form universal language of the we want to call the neural uh, phenomes of words, thoughts, complexes, and super concepts, and they can literally download these into someone's mind, which means they can transplant thoughts or, in a sense, a portion of that person's identity into another individual's cortex. People say, no, they can't do that. I'm sorry, the technology is far more advanced than you can imagine. Hey, Michael Jackson hired a roboticist to do this, so this is not outside of even the popular culture. It's right there in our faces. Well, it's and, concerning and, to me. Uh, Bill, it, I wanted to throw in yeah. one more strange news article because uh, this needs to be mentioned before the 30th, and that is that uh, I'm, I'm in uh, Southern California right now, and off of your coast in San Diego, I don't know if you've discussed this already, but Halo Corporation is about to have a zombie apocalypse drill just off the Yes, coast. I know that. <laughs> Isn't that wild? You know what I'd like to do is get you back tomorrow, either at our early uh, first hour uh, show or the uh, perhaps the uh, the third hour, because we need to continue this dialogue. A lot of people think this is secondary. You know, what's going on with the election? What's going on with this zombie apocalypse that the Homeland Security is doing? These ceremonies are getting more intense literally by the day and week. And most people, it just completely goes over their head when they realize he spent millions and billions of dollars on these projects, and people don't grasp that we are completely immersed in it. And the average person out in the public thinks that somehow, quote, we have choice, we have control, we have knowledge, and they're completely, abjectly ignorant of what's really going on. Life is much stranger than you think, and that's why we want everybody to get Weird Stuff. You can pre-order it now over on FreemanTV.com. Weird Stuff's going to outline and database all of this, uh, giving you the tool you need to share it with your family and friends, because I think that's more important. So we're going to lay it out so that it's, it's palatable to anyone and that you can share it easily with people and they don't have to worry about it because it's weird stuff, right? Because you've always got to break through those barriers, right? Dr. Well, yeah, you get a little bit of humor, but after a while, they kind of get it. Uh, as I say, one of the taglines I say is, reality is top secret. If you ask enough questions, you'll get security clearance. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Well, it's a digalism. I try to get people to kind of come out of the box. I'm a box. You know, I'm a I'm a messianic believer in the Most High God. I believe that the God of the universe created us as advanced co-creators of His universe because we are sons and daughters of the Most High. We are infected on many different levels, not only with pathogens, viruses, and bacteria, but transdimensional memes and beings that are far more advanced than people could even imagine. But the fingerprints of it are all over our ancient books. From the Bhagavad Gita to the Upanishads to the Bible to the Zohar, to all these, you can find it everywhere. Not just in one book, but in every ancient book of every society on earth, you'll find the evidence of the Naga and the, and the Chitahuri and all these demonic serpentine beings. It's everywhere, including even the symbology of the hat of the Pope. And people just don't and grasp right what they say. your modern pop culture right there in front of your face with, with Katy Perry, with Michael Jackson, with, uh, you know, the television shows. It's all right there. Everything that I outlined for you and the symbolism that's right in front of you every day, it all says the same thing. That's the part that we need to really make people understand. Yeah. In other words, there's no deviation. Once you start seeing the patterns, your eyes are open, the scales have fallen from them, your ears are unblocked, you look and you say, my gosh... I am no longer profane. I understand these things, and then mankind won't be a victim. Amazing. Dr. Bill. So can you make it tomorrow, uh, first or third hour? I think I can. Which would you prefer, first or third? Uh, third, since I already have another show yet tomorrow. Very good. We'll see you again at uh, 2 to 3 o'clock Pacific time across America and worldwide. Remarkable. Again, weirdstuffmagazine.com and freemantv.com. Get the information today.